Hello everyone, it's Erin and I am back and the heat wave is over so that's great. I'm no longer heat wave Erin which was, uh, uh, it's, it's better. It's definitely a lot better and I was actually able to get things done. So it's been about a week since I filmed the last video and I've been working on my stamps. I got pretty much all my stamps done um, but I'm just going to show you three of these binders because it was the most impactful and it's the two that I showed you before as well as another one which uh, has some more explanations and stuff so that's fun. So this is the Halloween binder and I need a better label for it because this is clearly coming off but that's fine. It's purple because Halloween is a purple color and also because I like purple. But um, I definitely organized everything so I took all of the character stamps and all of the... I'm gonna just focus in a bit more. There we go. Because I keep like leaning over and <laughs> that's not great. Um, I didn't close my door so if you hear my dogs I'm sorry. Or my husband. I'm sorry, he's playing a game right now. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I have all the icon stamps uh, separated, all the character stamps and stuff like that. I mean, I've got like one or two in here, but I wasn't too fussed about that. And I just basically wanted everything to be very visible, so I made sure that everything had a piece of white paper behind it so that I could see all the characters. And I made sure that all of the stamps were prepped so that anything I took was already ready to go. And I got in a bunch of new stamps because these, this is the newest release from Clearly Besotted. And I have the newest release from uh, Lawn Fawn in here, these guys up here. I also thought of taking out the owls because they're animals, but it came down to where do I think to use animals. I know I have a few animals scattered elsewhere. But when I was thinking of when would I use animals the most, it was definitely Halloween, so I kept them in here. And uh, you got ghosts. This is a little dress-up thing, which I normally would not keep dress-up things together. You'll see the dress-up section in another spot. But um, since these characters aren't characters without the dress-up thing, I just decided to keep it together. The same thing with the... Um, the skeletons here, the, the skeleton bodies and their dress-up things just mostly go specifically with them, so I just kept them with them. And I did mix up fall and Halloween just because, like, I'm not that fussed about, you know, oh, it has a leaf in it, it doesn't have to be used here. You know, we discussed that last time. If you watched the previous video, if you didn't, please go do that because uh, the algorithm loves view time. But, um, <clears throat> I figured that I'm still going to mix things up like I can use a scarecrow during Halloween as well as fall so that's perfectly fine I wasn't gonna be your categories are really gonna depend on the size of your collection as well as how you think of things which again we went over last time so it really just depends on if you're gonna be paging through your stamps and going like oh why is this here then that's a the time to move it but if you're more going to use them because you see them together, because like, oh, this is specifically Halloween, but this is a fall one, but they can go together. You, you never know. So it really comes down to how your brain works. Because this could be a Halloween image, and it could be a fall image. It just really depends on how you're going to think about it. Or if it's like a gardening image in your brain, because it's dealing with vegetables, you know? I, I, it's not that deep, but it, it also is a little bit, you know, it's, it's that interesting mix of you really have to know how you're going to work with something. And so I did keep all of the icons together. I didn't even weed out any really, like I tried to go in there, I was just like, any stamp that you've had for a long time and you just do not want to use, go ahead and take it out. But the Halloween section had already been pared down, I think the year prior so it, it's very much like most of the things that I want to use or I'm fine with seeing in here because sometimes it is just about the collection too. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the icons. And then I put in this little divider. Unfortunately, it doesn't reach out far enough, but it's fine. You can see it on the sides. And it was mostly just to kind of tell my brain, hey, there's a division here. So I wanted to try and keep the houses and the large motifs together so I could see what I had. And I clearly don't have a lot, but it's not something I need to seek out because like three of these, I think this one, this one, this one, and this one were brand new from Clearly Besotted. Like just, I bought four stamp sets and each one came with a large icon or a large house or something. So I don't know if that's going to be a trend going forward or what, but clearly I'm going to get things. So it'll be all right. 
And I did go ahead and separate out the pumpkins. And they're trying to escape for some reason. But I did go out ahead and separate out the pumpkins and uh, leaf piles from my, um, from my collection. So not just singular leaves, but piles of leaves and things to make either jack-o'-lanterns or just regular pumpkins. So we have a very large pumpkin. We have some really small ones. We have all varieties. So it's going to be very easy for me to mix up the pumpkin sizes and motifs together and then here are things that are just generally Halloween and also Halloween dress up so you'll have the um, the hats and sometimes there's books and uh, beakers and all of that kind of thing and cauldrons I really wanted to keep those together so that they can be used together and then I went through the entire collection and I really thought that I would have more candy honestly but this is all of the candy that I have from all of the sections of both food and um, winter holidays and all of that stuff and, and Easter. Uh, this is this is what it ended up as. I thought there would be more, but now there's room to grow, so that's great. So yeah, it's gonna be a lot easier for me to use and a lot easier for me to pick out what I want to work with and to mix those sets up because that's something that I really like doing when I create scenes is mixing things up and just going, like whatever goes can go instead of, uh, you know, taking out 15 different stamp sets and being like, oh my god, how is this going to work? So the other big project was the winter and winter holidays kind of stamp sets, which I did not think that it would be that big. This binder is actually bigger than the Halloween one, and I like Halloween way better, but here we are. So uh, these are the brand new stamps that I got. I got this one. And similar as before, we have the uh, the characters in front. So you've got all of the all of the characters prepped and everything with their um, anything that was overtly winter holiday or Christmas or whatever you want to call it. You know, like with the the Santa hats is kind of overtly not just winter but an actual holiday. I did try and sort out the difference between they're just wearing a sweater and could be used any time. Like you could argue that this could be used any time, but he's also like a polar bear in my mind, so I kept him in there. You know, it's it's very complicated and it's the same thing with these deer. They're technically just deer, but when am I going to think of using deer? Is it going to be if they're reindeer or regular deer, I had a hard time with that and I just said, you know what, make a decision because you, you, you're not going to have a definitive right answer, right? It's just wherever your brain is going to go. This is clearly a reindeer, so that's kind of the only time I'd use it. These are just regular deer, so I did go back and forth and, you know, maybe I'll move them. Like, just because you made a decision does not mean that you can't go back and change it if you find that you're having to remind yourself, oh yeah, there's also deer over here when you're making a autumn picture or a, uh, like a spring picture, because that's when the, the baby deer come, you know, like if, if that's the kind of thing that ends up in your brain, then you know when that's, when you have to move it. And I did keep a lot of things that were from sets, but only some of them were overtly a holiday so you know you've got the one that's holding a wreath and some of these animals there were a lot more animals but they got separated out into their actual um, dog and cat sections because there was nothing they weren't wearing a hat it was just an animal and I thought well they can go in with the regular animals and these ones are the winter ones so that's the thing too, you can break up the sets. I did end up moving the sheep, so there's only some of the sheep here, but the knitting sheep went in with its own collection. Because, I mean, it was just knitting, right? <laughs> but yeah, you see we've got some just regular deer, because this is where I think of them. And I found out that this one was damaged, I don't know how that happened, but... It's funny because I have so many stamps, and this is like one of like two that's actually damaged. This deer is like ripped in half. I'm, I mean, you can put it back together, so it's not a huge deal, but it's kind of sad. And then these mix and match ones, I made sure to put together on the same thing because they weren't before, and it was very complicated to figure out that they were there. And I also tried to weed out the people that, you know, telling the difference between they just happen to be wearing a coat and they're actually bundled up for winter. It, it feels like these characters are like very cold characters so I wanted to um 
I wanted to make that separation. Same with the tiny reindeer. You can tell those are reindeer with the, the bells on them. So that's kind of the only place that I'm going to use them. And these ones are all wearing the Santa hats. You know, it, it wasn't very difficult to separate them out. And how much you separate things, I'll talk about it more, how much you separate things is going to also depend on your uh, the size of your collection. Because... I mean, yeah, these ones are obviously holidays, so that's fine. But if you start to get things... Oh, these are coming apart already. No. I bought a box of cheap... I didn't know that Avery had, like, totally different qualities of their page protectors. And I bought a box of them, and I thought, yeah, Avery's good. No, it's not. The Amazon Basics ones that I have are way better. But it's fine. So I put a bunch of hole reinforcers, and even those are coming off. Um... The same issue I had with gingerbreads. Are they cookies? Are they people? Are they characters? Because I did separate cookies in a different place. And yeah, it depends on the size of your collection. So these are like the cookies that are, even if they're not Christmas cookies, or like this is a cookie instead of a Christmas tree. This is a cookie instead of a Christmas tree. And these are Christmas drinks. I might actually end up taking the, um, the words out of there but it's fine for now <laughs> it's fine for now and finally all of my there's fur everywhere just so you know uh finally all of my snow globes are together because they hadn't been together and the large i was gonna say set pieces but that's not what they are uh the large icon pieces i don't know scene builder pieces but yeah, I have a few snow globes of different sizes, and I totally forgot that this is one of the this is one of the earlier lawn fawn sets where you're in front of a, a fireplace, which is a good one. But yeah, I separated out the cookies from the actual trees, which took me a while. And then the other thing I did was again, I thought I had way more presents because I felt like every set had a present. And maybe at some point I just got so tired of it that I'm just like, I'm not putting this in the collection. I'm tired of seeing presents because I have too many. And it could have been that because what do I do if I'm, I know that I'm not going to use a stamp. I don't use sentiments if I know I'm not going to use a sentiment or I have the same cloud a thousand times. I don't keep it. You don't have to keep things just because they're on the stamp set. I know you paid money for them and you did pay money for it. So if you want to keep it, that's perfectly fine. Do whatever you want. I don't care. But for me, if I keep say, seeing the same heart by the same company over and over again, and I know I have two or three or ten perfectly good hearts, I'm not going to feel obligated to keep it in my collection and have it take up space when I'm just going to choose the ones that I've had before. And so it could be that. It could just be I had too many presents at some point and I just stopped keeping presents. I don't know. But this is all this, the presents that I found over most of the, the stamp collection. So not too bad, actually. And then what I did was when I was going through the holiday stuff and the icons, I made sure to separate everything that was a decorated tree. Like it has stuff on it. It's either got a star or it's got, you know, ornaments or whatever that clearly said this is a holiday tree, whatever holiday, many holidays have taken the holiday tree icon. So whatever that is, putting it together and then ornaments as well and lights and stuff so that all of it went together. So if I said if I needed to decorate something in that kind of way, this is the sheet that I would go to. And it ended up only being one sheet, so I found that interesting. And then I also separated out winter. I know that I mentioned it during the uh, during the, the, the video. I was going to say episode, but like what? <laughs> during the video, wouldn't it be interesting if I separated out all of my snowmen? And it was. I thought I had way more snowmen, and I don't. I'm not going to go buy more. But I thought, you know, from the amount that I really like snowmen, I thought that it would just be like pages and pages and pages of snowmen. And it's actually kind of not. You have a lot of different motifs and, you know, but this is like, this is like one, two, three, four, five, six. Six stamp sets specifically, and then a few that were like included in something else. Like this was included in something else. This was included in something else. So like it's not even that many snowman exclusive stamps or sets specifically. 
So that's cool. And they're by a bunch of different companies, which I like because then you get different um, art styles, which I always like to have variety. And then I separated out things that were actively winter. Now, I thought I had a ton more because I had separated out tiny winter things with a bunch of things like hats and coats and all of that. But when I actually took a look at the snowflakes and everything, I have a decent mix of snowflakes. I have a rooftop thing which has snow on it. I have the houses with snow. I have a few igloos and a few uh, like iceberg things, I guess. And um, stacks of snow for snowball fights. I have a few of those from a few different companies. I think it's a good mix, but it's not overwhelming. Like this is enough to pick from to make a whole lot of scenes, so that's fine. And then I also separated out the hats and coats for or hats and scarves and earmuffs and antlers and stuff like that for dress up. Because I know I'm going to end up with more. It's one of those things where people just like to include it to say to fill space on a stamp thing. So that was the categories that I did. But again, the way that you separate out your things is going to be different depending on the size of your collection. If you have just two sets that can vaguely be called Winter Holiday, and they have a bunch of different icons on them, but there's only like two or three sets, just put them in the Winter Holiday section. Put them in Christmas, wherever you're going to think of them, and call that good. You don't have to sit here and be like, oh, but this is this kind of tree, and this is a snowflake, and this is a that. My collection is very large, so the way that I have to separate things out is going to be very different, and you can see that with something like my nature binder, which is this. Now, the first thing that I did was I separated out leaves and branches, just leaves and just branches, anything that's branch and anything that's a leaf. Why? Because I kept finding leaves everywhere. <laughs> there were leaves everywhere. They were scattered all over and so many different things come with branches. You can see all of the different kinds of branches in here. This is a tree and that's in the wrong spot. It's fine. <laughs> I'll get that out of there after one. Uh, this is also in the wrong spot because that's a, that's a, there's, there's a tree section. Okay, that's the thing. I was getting the mix up because I was watching a TV show while I was doing this, which I totally suggest doing. If you're going to do something as big of a project like this, if you have such a big collection, put on an audiobook or something. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I found leaves everywhere. And you can see all the different styles of leaves, all the different kinds of leaves, all the different directions of leaves, everything. They were everywhere. And there is no way that I would go to... Uh, you know, the, the various stamp sets of children and animals and especially the amount of animals that I have, every single one to find the exact right leaf for whatever I'm working on. This way, I can look at what and say, I want this kind of leaf. I want this kind because it's going to be a jungle page and how many kind of jungle leaves do I have? That's going to be a lot easier than saying, oh, well, there's this jungle leaf with this animal set from Lawn Fawn, and there's this jungle leaf from Blue Honey, you know, Hello Bluebird, and then there's this one. It gets complicated, you know, so it really depends on how your brain works. And my brain says, if I'm looking for leaves, I want to be able to find leaves. And then on that same vein, if I'm looking for trees and logs, I want to be able to find trees and logs. And so that's what I separated out. Here's all the different kinds of just regular trees and tree stumps or logs. Because again, I buy a lot of animal stamps and boy howdy do they like to include tree stumps with animal stamps. It is a lot. Look at all of this. There's so many just tree stumps and pieces of trees and logs and all of that stuff. And... I'm not going to know or remember which stamp set this all came with. Now, if you have to cite your sources constantly because you're working for a company, this is not going to be a good idea <laughs> because I can guarantee I don't know where this log, this, this stump is from. I don't. I don't care, um, but I don't know where it's from. It's probably from Hello Bluebird, just judging on the, the style of the art, but that's the best you're going to get. Like, I'm not going to be able to cite the source. So if you're the kind of person that has a blog or a Patreon or a YouTube channel that happens to cite your sources a lot, I have a YouTube channel, you're literally watching it right now, I don't care. I'm not going to tell you these things because I am more about inspiration than citation. And I'm going to make that my catchphrase. Uh, <laughs> but if you need to do that, don't do this. 
don't mix this stuff up because you're going to have a hell of a time sorting it out and whatever company you're working for is like, why did you mix seven other companies in there? I don't work for companies anymore. I stopped working for companies in 2013, so I don't have to worry about this anymore. I can do whatever I want with my stamp stuff and mix it all up as much as I want, and the only thing I have to get sanguine with is the fact that my stuff doesn't get shared on the company pages because I don't use exclusively stuff from one company. But that's fine. It's perfectly fine. I would rather just make what I want to make. So, uh, again, completely mixed up, because the next section is plants and flowers so anything that can be categorized as a plant between you know you've got your succulents your cactuses your actual flowers your happy cactus with a smile on its face uh, even the ones that are technically plushies it all went into here so that I could find it even some grass but I did get to a point where I was like okay I have too much grass because when I color grass I'm not coloring stamped grass. I have done it a few times and maybe when it's easier to find, I will try and do it again. If I end up just being like, no, I hate this and I don't want to keep these anymore, then I won't keep them. But I ended up with a lot of grass and a lot of little flowers and stuff like that. And it's not like these things shouldn't exist. Oh, I also put bushes in here. It's not like these things shouldn't exist because if you do not like adding your own art, if you do not feel confident in your drawing or anything like that, then having these things be able to be stamped, especially stamped and die cut, if that's your style, perfectly fine. It's not mine, so it's not something I have to keep in my collection. But if it works for your collection, then go ahead and put it wherever you want. I don't, like, seems good to me. But, yeah, it comes down to keeping what I need because I have a lot of stuff. So these ones happen to be in pots, but when they weren't in pots, I did put the pots in other places. The pot went somewhere else. <laughs> But yeah, this is all the bushes and all of the flowers and stuff like that so I can easily find them and easily tell the difference of like, oh, these all happen to be a Hawaiian type plant or flower. I wonder if I have more. Well, I'll be able to find them in here. This guy is misplaced. So is that mushroom. It's fine. Like I said, I was doing this while I was doing other stuff. It's easy to move because it's all together. And then the next category, finally, is nature icons. And so it's basically mushrooms and tiny bugs. I swear, I don't know where the other bugs went. I think they might be in with their own animal section. I did separate bugs at one point, and then sometimes I was just like, oh, no, let's just put it in with the stamp set. So there could be bugs in two different places. Uh, but you'll see the pots went elsewhere. Puddles of water. I don't know why they're so prevalent, but puddles of water. Lots and lots of suns. I had to get rid of so many suns. I was just like, why are they here? Because when I color, again, I'm just going to color the light of the sun. I don't need a stamped image. And so there was very few where I was like, okay, fine, I'll keep a couple. Because there was a lot. The same with the, the, the crescent-shaped moon. So many of the same moon, the same size, by the same company, over and over and over again. And you have to understand, especially from a company like Lawn Fawn, I have been purchasing their stamps since 2010. So they're going to repeat stuff. It's not me dissing them because why do they keep giving me the same thing over and over again? If you've never purchased from Lawn Fun, you certainly don't have that and you don't have 10 of them. So it's fine. But I have been purchasing from them since the beginning, since their very first stamp set. And while I haven't purchased everything they've made, I've purchased a lot of what they've made. So it stands to reason that I would keep finding the same things over and over again. Much like the grass, the suns and the moon were everywhere and clouds so many clouds to the point where again I was just getting rid of them I'm like there's only so many I'm ever gonna need I, I mean it's a lot okay I kept a variety even but it's so many and unlike mushrooms where I know I will use every size and variation of mushroom or tiny rock or what, whatever the water puddles are for I'm gonna keep them around for a while the clouds are probably not something I'm going to use except for in specific situations of me needing to stamp an image onto something like an inked background and wanting an inked cloud. Because if I'm just going to make a scene and color it, I'm just going to color the cloud. I'm not going to stamp it because then it'll have a black outline on it and that's not what I want to color. So I don't even need as many as I kept, but I certainly did not keep as many as I had. And then we get into the larger pieces, which I did keep separate, 
just to keep it easier for myself. So you'll see the, the things get a little bit mixed up because the trees are in here with, I mean, this isn't technically nature, but it's not, I, I could probably move this to Halloween, but I could also move it to the regular scene builders, you know? It's hard to determine where you want to put stuff sometimes. But again, with the branches, so many trees are included with a lot of animal stamps and it just gets very convoluted. So I just kept the larger pieces all together to be able to find the really large icons, the really large mushroom, the really large um, cloud and all of that stuff. It was just easier to keep together. So that's the, uh, that's the end of the sorting. And I hope that helps. And like I said, all, all of these categories are really going to depend on the size of your stamp collection. If you have a very small stamp collection, you have maybe 20 stamp sets and you want to make this work um, because you don't like paging through the stamp sets or you want things more mixed together so that you have in a, a faster way to catalog and look through your stuff. If you just want animals, you have an animal section like that. Go ahead and just do a blanket nature. You don't have to say, oh, well, this is where, and, and especially if you're doing it in an eight and a half by 11 size, this is a big size. This holds a lot of stamps together. So don't break it down of, I need leaves and flowers in another section. No, just have it, the, the nature stuff goes over here. And it might not even be a whole binder at one point. I have a lot of binders because I have a lot of stamps, but that's me. Make it work for you. Cause that's one of the things that I really like about the stamps. I, uh, catalog inventory is it's easy to take inventory and stock of what you actually have and fill in holes of what you might actually need because you're like man I wish I had this motif and you can go get it because you know exactly what motifs you do and do not have you can see everything at a glance I very much subscribe to the idea of the 30 second office where everything that you own can be located within 30 seconds so it's either cataloged in your brain or you happen to know you have it because of a spreadsheet, whatever, depends on your memory. 30 seconds, you can lay hands on it. And that's one of the things that I needed. I can lay hands on all my nature stuff in an instant. I can lay hands on certain um, motifs in an instant. If I want to just do holiday crafting or if I want to do Halloween crafting, well, this is literally all of my Halloween stamps. So I could take this with me if I needed to go somewhere. If I need to batch... Um, stamp things I can do that because I have a few little boxes separated out like this with uh, Halloween images this is sitting on my desk right now it doesn't usually but it's the Halloween time uh, so if I need to just stamp things out in a batch kind of way so that I have things to color without having to get out my stamp blocks and and, and you know my stamp press and all of that stuff I have things already here ready to color I have some things already colored so if I just want to make something quick I can be like, oh, I can make something for this character. And I can locate all of those things in 30 seconds because I know exactly where that binder is and everything's organized in that kind of way. And I'm not, again, I <laughs> need to reiterate because people get like really defensive about how they organize and how, in, you know, if you organize differently, they have to just kind of throw in their, oh, well, I do this. I get it, okay? I get it. We all like... We all want to be right always and it's fun to, especially if you have a system that works for you, you want to share, but there's a difference between sharing and one-upsmanship. So I, 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 know, I know you've seen the, these comments before. Anyway, I'm not saying that mine is the correct way because it's not. Mine is the correct way for me and it's basically because I've been doing this for such a long time, my way has completely evolved. I have literal pictures of how things used to be stored and how things are stored now and maybe in a few years it'll be completely different. I don't know. This has been working really well, but again, I just had to reorganize all of this and filter it down a bit more because the clutter of having so much mixed together was causing a problem. But maybe for you, it'll be the opposite. If you have things pared down too much, it'll hinder your creativity. It really depends on knowing yourself and knowing your supplies. I'm always going to advocate you need to know your supplies. Know what you have. Know how it works. Know how you use it. And that will determine what you purchase and how you organize it. Because nobody can just blanket tell you this is the way to do it. Because it's, it's going to be so individual. You may, you can of course take inspiration. That's why I'm doing this video in the first place. But nobody can just say this is the one true way to do that but 
we can at least give you advice. So that's my advice. I hope you like this, found something inspiring. Maybe you wanna break up all your sets. Maybe you really hate this idea and you wanna keep them all together and you just wanted to look at my stamp collection. I hope I provided some entertainment there. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down and I will see you on the next one. Goodbye, everybody.